Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence uh, for our servicemen and women throughout the world and also for all those who have passed away in our community this past week. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Rexer? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Roskin? Mr. Gahan? Here. Mr. McGough? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes. Um, I should also make note that uh, Mr. Loscombe did contact counsel and uh, he will be unable to make today's meeting. Third order, 3A, outline of the 2013 audit timetable from Robert Rossi and Company received on January 21, 2014. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, minutes of the Scranton, Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority's regular board meeting held on November 21, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, results of tax assessor's report for hearing date held on January 8, 2014. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, minutes of the regular meeting of the Scranton Housing Authority held on January 6, 2014. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3E, tax assessor's report for hearing date held on February 12, 2014. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3F, Controller's Report for the month ending December 31, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Are there any clerk's notes for today? Nothing at this time, Mr. McGough. Okay. Uh, on today's agenda, just very quickly, are a number of appointments. Uh, we have been asked uh, if we would table, and I'm looking for the right number, uh, it would be 5C. Uh, we have been asked if we would table th that appointment. Um, and uh, the others, the should make note that the appointments to the parking authority the parking authority operates under a different set of or a different statute than other authorities and that appointments and removals from the parking authority can be done at the discretion of the mayor. Uh, they do, the mayor does not have to wait until the terms expire for those to make new appointments just so people are aware of that. Um, any other Announcements from Council? Mr. Rogoff, I have two announcements, please. Please. Um, this evening, the North Scranton Viking football team will be having a benefit for the LeBron family. Uh, it'll be held at McCullen's Bar, which is formerly Jilly's. Uh, the fundraiser will begin tonight from 5 until 9. And one other one, um, I got this from uh, next Thursday, uh, February 20th. The Kiwanis Club of Scranton is presenting a community salute to Matt McGloin. Um, this will be at the Radisson Lackawanna Station, and it begins at uh, 5.30 to 6.30 with dinner at 6.30. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, just two <coughs> announcements uh, for from the business administrator, 
Um, proposals will be open in Council Chambers on Monday, March 3rd, 2014 at 10 a.m. for City of Scranton RFP for Financial Advisory Services. Uh, that would be Monday, March 3rd at 10 a.m. and our um, proposals for RFP for financial advisory services. And one other, it's kind of a little past due, but um, RFP proposals were open yesterday um, for legal services, special labor counsel for the city of Scranton, and there were seven um, proposals submitted. And that is all. Fourth order, citizens participation. There is no one signed in, so anyone who would wish to address council, please. Yeah, I'm <laughs> oh, good snowy morning. Good morning. Um, first of all, could you provide the uh, the statutes that you uh, mentioned before, the differing ones for the differing authorities? At some point, not right now, but I would yes, like. Yes, I, I don't have it. Um, it was communicated to us through the, the okay. law department. Um. Okay. Uh, on fa uh, yeah, 5B, no, excuse me, 5E, is this the same Paul McGloin that is regularly in the uh, court notes for tax delinquencies? What was the? I said 5E, Mr. Yeah. McGloin. Is he the same one that's regularly in the court notes for tax delinquencies? Could you check that? Because I really don't think we should be appointing, if it is, I don't think we should be appointing people who are not doing what we ask of our citizens. Thank you. Um, and then um, I've been wanting to ask for this for some time. Uh, on, the, on 3C, would it be possible for the clerk's office to uh, provide on the, the monthly basis the uh, results of the just for the city taxes uh, or city assessments on whether they've how much they've gone up the cumulative amount how much they've gone up or down um, yes I, I'm sure that we could do that I, I will ask mrs. Reed if uh, that will be made available I would assume to to mr. Wexler for okay. a, 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 in a timely manner okay thank you Sorry uh, to give you another. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Loscombe's here, but I'll get, oh, first the status of the sub questions I've submitted. When? Uh, Mrs. Schumacher, or Ms. Schumacher, I do, I do have those. Okay. Um, I was in the process of doing, of trying to get answers to all of those. Um, I will get those to you. I, okay. I do not have them. I okay. will have them at least by the next. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, question, will Chief Graziano and the acting Chief DeSarno have overlapping pensions for four years? Last week you passed that. I don't what do you mean by overlapping? I'm not sure quite. Well, I assume that as a chief they get a city pension that is separate from a union pension. And you, um, Mr. Loscombe, last week said it's always been in the in the firefighters contract uh, contract that they are allowed that if someone is acting, they are allowed to contribute to the the firefighters union pension. And so now they they would be eligible for both. And then you pass the one for the police department to make it the same as the fire department. So I don't know. I don't know if they're paying if either was paying in or is paying into two different pension plans I'm sure we that the I only way that they could collect from two would be if they were paying into two well could you could you check that out thank you because we do contribute a significant chunk of that as well um, and then I'm unhappy to report um, that I believe both of the fire hydrants that service my home are nowhere to be seen and uh, several years ago, I asked that we do as other communities do, and that is put the, the flags on so people at least know where they are and uh, that the, the plows can at least take that into consideration when they're plowing. <laughs> um, you know, it was just two short weeks ago we were lamenting the, the fire hazard of the people 
that were affected by the water outage and now many of us are in the same boat because there's Can't no access the to the hydrants so and they're iced in and packed in uh, again back to the liability issue with a rental registration fee uh, what services are provided by the fee paid by the owners of rental property other than the safety verification and are we currently are we current on those inspections and if not what is the liability if we take the fee and something happens that could have been avoided if the inspection had occurred would the city be liable okay well again I would ask for a monthly report on the number of properties that are registered and how many of those properties have been inspected. If we could do that, I don't know, whose bailiwick is that? Mr. Rogan's, I guess, with the community? I don't know. I, I, I don't know under which auspice that would uh, I, I think me and, me and Mr. Wexler could both work on that together because it, it involves finance with the income coming in and community development. I know we, okay. we spoke briefly yes. about <coughs> some changes um, to the rental registration, so. Okay, and? Continue. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Well, no. well, I'd really like to talk about some, uh, another subject tonight. I'm gonna stick with our firefighting for a while. Our force as, as public safety is the number one priority for our or any city. Um, I have quest more questions than answers. Uh, so unless Mr. Loscombe has any questions, I won't expect any answers until next week. But first, a little bit of history. Prior to the Safer Grant Award, three of the seven engine companies had been closed down and there were brownouts at the remaining companies. The number of firefighters was 113. In late May of 2012, the award of 8.2 million safer, safer grant was announced. The grant was sufficient to rehire 28 laid off firefighters and one returning from military duty and for adding 20 new firefighters. The administration declined the funds for the new firefighters as they would not have the money to retain them after the two year life of the grant and would have to pay unemployment benefits when they were laid off. This reduced the amount of the grant to 5.1 million. My first question, questions have to do with the grant itself. Was it all received in one lump sum, and if so, into what account, and if not, how was it received? I'm assuming we don't have the answers to that tonight, but I'll get them in writing maybe this afternoon or this weekend, hopefully. Now, the Safer Grant website states the only allowable costs under the hiring of firefighters category for new or rehired firefighters are salary and associated benefits, actual payroll expenses. Safer funding will pay for the total salary and benefit costs for each unfunded or for each funded position. How much was drawn down from the total grant in 2012 and 2013? Also, assume that's got to be checked now back to the present <clears throat> uh, I'll skip part of it in 2014 the budgeted compensation in addition to the standard salary is hundred and thirty three percent of the standard salary applying the additions to standard salary factor to the average 2014 budgeted for the two categories funded by the safer grant rehires, that being 11 chauffeurs and 19 privates, will cost about $2,325,000. While the operating budget includes this funding, and I might add very, um, very disappointing because it was overlooked uh, by myself and I, I have been chastising myself for that, and also in the presentation of the budget because the number, when you go to the Bureau of Fire page, it shows as a, a decrement the number of firefighters, so which remain the same, but the, uh, the amount, it was not made clear that for half a year, 
the budget was actually going up by two million dollars and we were in essence adding now I do want those firefighters there but I, I don't think it was presented in a manner that uh, that people were aware of what was happening but that being said uh, the mayor's transition team estimated when the night that mr. Hickey was here that the budget revenues are overestimated by 7.85 million dollars what are the chances we might lose all or a portion of these expenses formerly picked up by FEMA to balance the budget? If anything, the city's finances have deteriorated since 2012 when we couldn't afford more than 113 firefighters. So how will we afford them now? And that's my question. And I'll quit there for tonight and maybe see you Thursday night. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Schumacher. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Joan Hodawanitz, Scranton taxpayer. And I do mean taxpayer because on Monday I paid my real estate taxes. I had to fight the guard at the Steamtown Mall to let me in at 8.30 because he said, the mall's not open yet. And I said, <laughs> I'm going to pay my taxes. Which brings up Marie's point on item 5E. I too have been reading the Lackawanna, Lackawanna County notes every week. And many times every year, I see the name Paul McGloin. And I always say to myself, gee, is that related to the famous Matt McGloin? And I think what we need to do is we need to check that address to see if the two match. And if this is the gentleman who is repeatedly in the newspaper for tax liens, I think we need to ask the question, why is he being nominated to represent the Scranton Parking Authority, okay? He may have a reason. Maybe it's a tax bill that he's contesting, so it appears in the paper. But for those of us who bother to pay our taxes, even though it's difficult, I think we're owed that explanation. I understand that you, you do not make that decision. You're simply giving your up or down, you know, on these uh, recommendations from the nominations from the mayor and it's the mayor's decision but I think it's an answer that the taxpayers deserve is this man uh, delinquent in his taxes and if so why is he being nominated for this post that having been said um, this recent snowstorm that we had I'm sure there are many people who felt that the snow was not removed uh, fast enough but it is not easy and last night, I live in the Forum Towers, and I was watching them cleaning Penn Avenue at 2 o'clock in the morning. And they're getting all that excess snow out of the curbside so people could park. Um, and I heard Mayor Courtright on the radio yesterday morning on WILK. Apparently, he had uh, ridden with the DPW workers at 2 in the morning, trying to make sure, you know, that they were able to get their jobs done and that they had the support they needed. So he's making a good faith effort, and this is his first major snowstorm. Uh, so maybe it wasn't perfect, but he certainly was involved in the process. I also understand that tomorrow at 10 a.m., he will be interviewed on WVIA. And I think it's probably good for most of us who can take the time and watch that program to see what he says in his first interview after having assumed the position of mayor, to see what policies he's going to advocate and what direction he wants to take the city as he's becoming familiar, more familiar with the problems and he's had at least six weeks on the ground. Uh, so I'd recommend that everybody has an opportunity to watch that interview 10 a.m on WVIA, and that you do so. Whether you support the uh, mayor or you do not, um, it's good, I think, to find out you know, where, what he thinks, what he's going to do for us as the mayor, so that we have the opportunity to fulfill our role uh, as the citizens. We need to hold our representatives accountable. And the only way you can do that is by being informed. And the last thing I have to say is I wish everyone would pray for spring. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> <coughs> Ms. 
since there is no one else uh, <laughs> in the uh, room, uh, I assume that that is all for citizens' participation. Fifth order, 5A motions. Mr. Wexler? Uh, nothing at this time, Mr. McGough. Mr. Rogan? Yes, um, just two comments. Um, one, I would just like to thank um, all my colleagues. We had four council members at the Pine Brook neighborhood meeting this past week, and there were a lot of items brought to our attention. We're looking forward to working with them. Um, it was good to have um, LIPS director Pat Hinton there as well, who will be looking into a lot of the issues that have been going on in Pine Brook for many years. So we're, we're looking forward to, to tackling those issues that were, that were brought up. And um, just two issues. I wanted to mention them publicly, and, and I'll speak to uh, Mr. Gawhan after the meetings. They are DPW related. But um, a resident on the 1500 block of South Irvine contacted me, and, and I believe we all received the, an email um, with a number of pictures regarding the snow removal on, on that street. And for those who aren't familiar with the area, 1500 of South Irving is, there are two roads that run right by one another. It is a very strange setup. It's not a grid like the rest of West Scranton or South Scranton. Um, and he did say that the snow removal has been deplorable for decades. Um, this isn't something new. It's something that's been going on far too long. Um, and I think from reading the email and looking at the pictures that were sent that the frustration just boiled over when um, the resident <coughs> couldn't get to his home because of, because of the problems. Um, so Mr. Gohan, I'll, I'll give these to you afterwards and, and we could address them with the DPW. And another issue, snow related, um, is near CMC um, where there's per much permit parking for residents. Um, it's been reported that private haulers have filled snow in in the area where the um, permit parking is for residents. Now I know parking has always been a difficult situation up there with the hospitals between the employees at the hospital, people coming to visit, um, relatives who are in the hospital. Um, so after the meeting I, I will take a swing up there to, to check it out for myself and, and to look into it. Um, regarding the agenda items, I think Mr. McGough summed those up pretty well uh, at the beginning of the meeting. Um, and that's all I have for now. Thank you. Mr. Gohan? Sure. Thank you. Um, I have one announcement. It was covered in the, uh, the paper, I believe, last week. Um, I spoke to the DPW director, uh, Dennis Gallagher, about it. Um, just asking residents uh, to please not uh, plow, shovel, and blow snow from your property into the road. It's causing a major concern. Uh, in neighborhoods throughout the city. Um, I realize it's difficult because of the amount of snow we have and there's really no place to put it, but uh, if at all possible, um, please refrain from doing that. And it is causing a major inconvenience for DPW and residents, and it does violate a city ordinance. Um, I did receive a complaint from an elderly gentleman of speeding up at Nayog Park. Um, I spoke to Chief Graziano along with Mr. Lascom about it, and the chief said that he would notify a patrolman and send an extra uh, patrolman up to Nayog Park, so I thank him for that. I'd also like to comment on the uh, DPW and their job during the snowstorm. I think that they did a fantastic job. Um, they work very hard, and I'd like to thank them for that. I'd also like to bring up an idea. Um, actually, one of the council speakers brought it up, Mr. Quinn, I believe, and I spoke to my colleagues about it uh, this past week. I also spoke to the mayor about it. Um, a tax amnesty program throughout the city. I think it would be a fantastic idea. Um, I have done a little bit of research on it, and every city that I've looked at that has instituted a tax amnesty program has received a huge infusion of cash into the city. Um, I know that the city of Reading did it, I believe back in 2012. Um, it was an initiative that produced $487,000 um, for Reading and $320,000 for the school district. Um, I have spoken to the mayor, as I said, also to the treasurer, Wayne Beck, um, so I'd like to get this idea um, off the ground and up and running. I think it would be a huge help, not only to uh, the taxpayers, but to um, the city uh, because everyone knows we're in uh, dire need of cash. Um, also I read in the paper, I think this is worth mentioning another idea, Music just, uh, the borough of Music just introduced an ordinance uh, denying permits to applicants with delinquent municipal fees. 
on the ordinance included building, occupational variance, and special exemption permits. Uh, I think that would be a wonderful idea. Um, I also brought that up to the mayor. Um, I sent an email out to my colleagues, uh, so we're batting that idea around too. I think that would help um, bring some more money into the city. Um, also, I think um, because of the snowstorm, in the event that we have another snowstorm, I think it would be a good idea to look at uh, odd and even alternative parking on the streets, especially downtown. I think that might help with the, uh, with the cleanup. I mentioned it to the mayor. Um, I'm going to mention it again. I think in uh, the next snowstorm, we might want to implement that. Um, and that is all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gaughan. Uh, also, I, I'll continue the commentary on the uh, DPW and snow plowing and removal. Um, in speak, as, as we all know, in the, the biggest problem that we have with snow plowing and snow removal is time and numbers. Um, we simply don't have enough people uh, to, in, in a major snowstorm, we don't have enough we don't have enough people, enough time, enough equipment to really work at clearing the whole city, um, which means that under emergency certificates, we need to go out and um, get private businesses to uh, assist in, in both snow plowing and snow removal, which puts a great deal of um, hardship uh, or on the budget um, that requires again money and uh, you know time uh, for people to do that but with that said I, I I'll reiterate I, I think the DPW does a, an adequate job of uh, you know snow plowing um, given the parameters in which they have to work a couple of things that have come up uh, as far as the odd even parking downtown it may be possible we talked about this a number of years ago when we had a committee actually created to look at snow re you know the snow removal in the city and odd even parking um, outside of the downtown is almost impossible right. uh, given the the size of some of the streets and the volume of cars that are parked. I, I'll just take the block in which I live. Um, both sides of that street are filled with cars. Uh, to try and do odd even parking, I, I don't, yesterday I drove around the block like three or four times waiting for somebody to come in, plow out a parking place. Uh, I had contacted somebody. So it, it really does make it difficult to do the odd even part of it. Um, the other problem is, is snow removal. Uh, yes, piles of snow are everywhere. Uh, we're running out of spots to put it. Uh, th the days of dumping it into the Lackawanna River are over. Um, you know, you can't do that. Uh, the University of Scranton or whoever uh, has allowed us to dump snow down at the what was the south side complex, but room down there is um, running out. You know, the next spots are up into areas of uh, Nayog, which I'm, I'm told uh, takes much greater time than getting down to south side, especially from the downtown area. So there are some issues with the, the snow removal um, which I'm sure we would all, hopefully temperatures go up and it removes itself, but uh, not likely to happen uh, very soon. Um, th the other problem that I, and I did speak to Mr. Gallagher about it, um, DPW director, are bridges and walkways. Um, for anyone that comes into the downtown from um, south side, you need to walk either across the Spruce Street complex or down across Cedar Avenue, and very rarely are those are those walkways 
uh, is the snow removed, which means now you have people walking out on the, on the road uh, to avoid the snow and people driving in or out of the downtown. It, it, it can become very dangerous. And, and I'll say the same for the um, Lackawanna Street Bridge Complex that very rarely are those walkways cleared, which again puts people out into the street, very busy streets. <clears throat> um, for, uh, I think we need to develop some way of getting these walkways cleared um, when there is a snow a snowstorm, um, because there are many people that um, that do walk into the downtown um, from the, some of the closer areas. But that is something we'll look like look at uh, again. It's in speaking with Mr. Gallagher. It's a, it's a matter of you know personnel, you know number of people that are available. It's a matter of time and it's a matter of equipment uh, uh, to get these things done. Uh, last thing I do want to mention is the, since the taxes were brought up, uh, just quick calculation uh, as I got my tax bill as well and uh, took a look at it. Um, I don't know if mine is reflective. I, I'm sure that it's reflective of most of the tax, you know, tax bills, but just in percentages, right now the, the percentage of your real estate taxes that you pay, uh, at least by my bill, 23% uh, of the tax bill goes to the county, um, 31 to the city, and 46 to the school district. Um, again, that's my tax bill, that's percentage-wise. That's how it works out. I think that adds up to close to 100. Um, but uh, at, at one point in time, we were lower than the county, but uh, no longer. Uh, that uh, we're, you're paying more to the city um, in real estate taxes, but again, far less than you do to the school district. And that's all for today. 5B. For introduction, a resolution, appointment of Thomas Borthwick, 719 North Sumner Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as Vice Chairman of the Board of the Scranton Parking Authority. Mr. Borthwick will be replacing Wayne Hiller, who resigned effective February 3rd, 2014. Mr. Borthwick's term will expire on June 1, 2016. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. <clears throat> item 5C will be tabled. Mr. McGough. Um, yes, this is the one that someone would care to make a motion to table item 5C. I make a motion to table item 5C. Second. On the question. Again, this is uh, at the request of uh, the administration. Um, at this point in time, they are going to send uh, an amended appointment or an amended resolution. Um, all those in favor of tabling item 5C, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5D for introduction, a resolution, appointment of William Connell, 606 North Bromley Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as chairman of the board of the Scranton Parking Authority. Mr. Connell will be replacing Kathleen Stella, who was removed from the board by letter dated January 22, 2014. Mr. Connell will fill the unexpired term of Kathleen Stella whose term is scheduled to expire on June 1, 2015. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5E for introduction, a resolution, appointment of Paul McGloin Sr., 139 South Merrifield Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 
18504 as a member of the Board of the Scranton Parking Authority. Mr. McGloin will be replacing Frank J. Tunis, Jr., who was removed from the board by letter dated January 22, 2014. Mr. McGloin will fill the unexpired term of Frank J. Tunis, Jr., whose term is scheduled to expire on June 1, 2017. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5E be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so move. Sixth order, 6A, no business at this time. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of the Council Number 8, 2014, authorizing the Mayor and other appropriate City officials of the City of Scranton to accept and disperse grant funds from the Walmart Foundation in the amount of $2,000 to purchase toys and coats from the Scranton Police Department's annual toy coat drive. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. <coughs> 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of the Council Number 10, 2014, amending file of the Council Number 100, 2009, and ordinance amending file of Council Number 91, 2002, and ordinance as amended, providing for the establishment of parking meter zones within the City of Scranton, establishing hours of operation, providing for the installation of meters and parking meter rates, authorizing the enforcement of parking ordinances and providing penalties for violations thereof by amending sections 3A to reflect the change in hourly, hourly rate at parking meters from $1 to $1.25 per hour. At this time, or what is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As Chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Gahan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. 7C, for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, resolution number 22, 2014, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Financing Authority First Amendment to grant number as noted and financing agreement for a local share account grant for the project known as Cedar 500 and to execute any and all documents necessary to change the grant to a loan pursuant to the amendment to the contract. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As Chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7C. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Gahan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. 7D for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption. Resolution number 23, 2014, authorizing the City of Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, through the Office of Business Administration to make application for a grant through the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development a Community Development Block Grant, CDBG Grant, for financial aid under authority of the Municipalities Financial Recovery Act, Act 47 of 1987, as amended, and if the grant application is successful, authorize the Mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute any and all documents necessary to accept and disperse the grant funds. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As Chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7D. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Garland? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7D legally and lawfully adopted. 7E, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption, resolution number 24, 2014, appointment of Dominic Giorgetti. 3015 Pittston Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505, as Chairman of the Civil Service Commission, effective January 24, 2014, 
Mr. Giorgetti's term will expire with the term of Mayor William L. Corwright. As Chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7E. Second. On the question, roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Gahan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7E legally and lawfully adopted and wish Mr. Giorgetti much luck in his new position. There is no further business. A motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Meeting adjourned. <coughs>